Okay. Well, welcome everyone. We're so glad you're here. Uh, we have a lot of exciting information to share with you, and, um, and we're really glad that you could make it tonight. So thank you for taking the time, making the drive. Um, I hope it's going to be worth your while. I think it will be, and I certainly want to make sure that by the end of all of this, we've answered all the questions that you have right now. More are going to come up. There are still plenty of opportunities to ask lots of questions, whether it's to Mr. Carraway or to EF. Um, but we'll we'll do our best to answer everything tonight that you can possibly think of and make sure you walk away with what you what you came to get. So, first question I have is: Has anyone in the room ever been other than Mr. Carraway and uh, Mr. Collins ever, or Dr. Collins ever been to China before? Anyone? Anyone been to Asia? Wow. This is wonderful. <laughs> um, wonderful, great. So um, what we are going to talk about is this adventure that will take you from Beijing to Xi'an to Shanghai. Um, and I've got lots and lots of information for you related to uh, what's included and not included, what the itinerary looks like, who EF is, how we make sure you're safe on tour, pricing information, all of that. So, um, so I'm just going to jump right in. So, to start with, um, I do want to talk for just a minute about why it's important to do this. And I have a feeling, I'm preaching to the choir here, who's been out of the country? Yes, um, I can imagine. So that's fantastic. And I, like I said, I'm sure this is going to, you're going to um, already identify with a lot of these things. But just let me say, it is so critical for students these days to have global experiences and to have the perspectives that they gain from global travel, to be exposed to other cultures and other ways of doing things, um, to have the chance to see what they've been learning in the classroom completely come to life in, a, in an entirely different way. All of those Chinese dynasties and thousands of years of history just have an amazing way of resonating with you when you're standing on the Great Wall. There's just nothing else like actually being there and experiencing it, tasting it and smelling it and touching everything that, that there is uh, to experience there. So it's also really important these days for colleges. They are really, and I'm sure you already know this, they are really looking for this type of thing in your application for school. Um, and yes, it's something to, to, to be able to write about maybe in your essays, to be able to put on paper. But it's also because they understand what it is that you gain from this kind of experience. Beyond just the facts and the, and the things like that that you learn, the understanding that you gain, the ways that you're stretched as a person, the way that you have to maybe find some flexibility you didn't know you had, or you have to use some collaboration skills maybe when you're trying to order in a Chinese restaurant and you don't speak Mandarin and you're trying to figure out how to make this happen and everyone's working together and using all kinds of signs and whatever. Um, there is just so much learning like that that goes on in these experiences. Um, and it, it, really, it really just makes all the difference in the world to be there. So, um, so the first thing that I want to do is to show you this video. It's but it's good. Actually, okay, let me see if this link is going to work. If it doesn't, I'll pull it up another way. This is just going to give you a very kind of uh, general sort of overview of global experiences like this. Lots of fingers. All right. My teacher, Ms. Rose, got us up this trip. Our local tour guide, she added in all these extra facts that it was like only the insiders know, you know, the really low people can know. Yes. It's an entire ship, yes. Up here, you see it in person. This is such an active tour, and you get really involved in the culture, and it's just, it's amazing. To see that perspective of China, to see their own life, that's not a good these things, everything we have studied over so many years, become realities in a very, very special place. Yeah. 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 This is the last thing that some of words we want to be Being able to apply all the knowledge I have to something that I can touch, that I can see, that I can hear the echo sounds off the walls, and it was unlike any other experience I've had. We're in the center of the crowd. Here we are at the Marketplace of Creative. 
had no seen it in any book. But to actually be here and to actually go on to the top of the screen is more than I These are the things we're going to cover. I'm going to jump right in with the educational objectives to start with, and then we're going to get all the way down to the cost and how to reserve your spot in the end. All right, so a lot of this I've already said, um, but just to kind of bring it home a little bit more, um, everything that we are offering to you on this trip um, is intended to reach not only the academic um, the academic sides of this, but also like I'm talking about the personal sides and your personal growth and that kind of thing. One of the things that is super important to know about EF, it's actually in our name, Education First. Um, EF is a global education company and we are accredited like your schools. So the content of what's being provided for you and some different options that you have um, with regard to the learning, and we'll get to that a little bit later, um, can be provided because EF is accredited in that way. So we are keenly aware of the 21st century skills that schools are talking about so much that students need to have moving forward and all of that kind of, um, those kinds of things. So to talk a little bit more about EF, first and foremost, safety is our number one concern. Making sure that, that your child is safe on tour is our number one goal. Um, so, to that end, we have some, of the, some things here that are very important to helping to ensure that. One is an all-inclusive coverage plan. I'll give you more details about that later, an insurance coverage plan. A six-to-one chaperone, student-to-chaperone ratio, okay, so for every six students, there's a chaperone, nice small ratio. Trained and licensed local guides, and those are the folks who meet up with you at different places and give you more insight teach you even more about those places, take you around the cities and things like that. And then a 24 hour emergency on call service. So 24 seven while the group is abroad, you would be able to reach your son or daughter and EF can use that system in reverse should we need to, to let you know about something. Secondly, um, the educational value, I've talked about this already some, but the accreditation is uh, first and foremost. And then the fact that we have um, bilingual, at least bilingual, professionally trained tour directors. The tour director who's with your group is with you the entire tour. So they pick you up at the airport when you first arrive, they stay with you the whole time, they're handling all the logistics, they're doing a lot of the guiding and teaching you about things. Um, they're making things, sure that things are running smoothly and back to safety, they are there for that as well. If there's any kind of emergency, someone needs to go to the doctor, the bus breaks down, whatever it could be, the tour director knows how to handle anything like that. Value is of, is of very high importance to EF as well, and we're doing everything we can to keep the cost down for you as much as possible. And the reason is because we just we want as many students as, as can to see the world. So um, EF has been in business now for 50 years. This year is actually our 50th anniversary. Uh, we've been doing it for a long time, we've seen it all, experienced it all. Um, and uh, one of the advantages to the size of EF and the contacts that we have and the contracts that we have is that we're able to get you really excellent pricing. So on things like flights and hotels and that kind of thing, you're getting really great deals because of the contracts that, that we have. Um, and then the last thing that I want to mention is our peace of mind program. So what this says, 
is that should something happen, like some kind of social unrest or some kind of a natural disaster, or something of that nature that is beyond anyone's control, then if your group as a whole feels uncomfortable with going to China on the dates that you're scheduled to go, then EF is going to work with you to either change the dates of your travel, or if you wanted to change the destination, we'll work with you to, to figure out a solution to the problem. Um, and if it's something where, for example, the State Department issues a travel warning, then we don't travel to that country. So we are never, ever going to send you someplace that has been deemed unsafe. Um, so you can rest assured about that and just know that in any case like that, we are definitely gonna work with you and figure out other arrangements. Any questions thus far? I'll try to remember to kind of pause as I go through, but then we'll definitely have time at the end. Okay. Um, so back to just another piece I think that's very important with regard to safety because this is what this speaks to the most. EF has 37,000 staff and teachers throughout the world, and we're in over 50 countries. So we have local offices everywhere, including in China. So if something happens and we need to alter the itinerary for some reason or make some change on the spot or whatever it might be, um, providing you with that extra support, we can do that on the ground because we have offices there with full-time staff who can get to you uh, very easily. In fact, we look at a concentration of pink dots. <laughs> They're primarily in China. We have a lot of English language schools, actually, um, in China, in addition to our offices. So. All right, so I think that's important to know. We're all over the place. You, specifically, however, are going to these three main cities, Beijing, Xi'an, and Shanghai. And you see Hong Kong down there because that is, uh, that's an optional extension that Mr. Carraway has not included at this point, um, but you can see more information about it on there. Um, I think he's planning on you just going to this first three cities, though. And then the numbers you see in parentheses are the number of nights you spend in each city. That's also in that um, color itinerary that I passed out to you. So you can see that too. So you actually do have, you have the International Flight Communication, another flight to Xi'an, another flight to Shanghai, and then your flight Home. Those flights in the middle there are short. Um, they're only about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes each one, so it gets you from point A to point B very quickly, um, which is nice in a country, especially as large as China is, for sure. Um, all right, so that's what it looks like on the map. This is what it looks like um, going day by day. Okay, so this is in that, uh, in that itinerary also. Okay, the same information is right here. I know that print is kind of small, so if you want to follow along here, you can. There's actually added information on each day as well, too. Um, a little, little more description. So, your trip is a total of nine days, all right? Um, that does include your two travel days, and you'll see that day one is actually the day that you leave for China. You'll arrive in China on um, day two, and then day three will be the, the day when you start all of your, you know, your exploring and that kind of thing. Um, so you will be flying overnight. Anybody know how long the flight is to China? Have any guesses? What do you think? 18 hours is pretty close. Not quite. That's the good news. Not quite that long. About 14, usually. Yeah. Um, so it is going to be a, a pretty long flight, but it's nice because, you know, you get up really high and then everything just, everybody just kind of goes to sleep and the lights are off, you're watching movies, you're reading a book, whatever you've got, and before you know it, you're in China. Um, it is pretty cool. Depending on which way you go, you might even fly over the Arctic, kind of the Arctic Circle. Um, what's weird, you know, is that you're going, what is it, forward 12 hours? No, back 12 hours. Usually it's a 12 hour time difference. So when you open the windows as you're going, it's bright light the entire time, even though your, your body's telling you it's nighttime. It's, it's interesting, so I think you'll get a kick out of that. But anyhow, so you get to China, um, and then you're gonna start in Beijing and have a few days in Beijing. So the amazing things you're gonna see in Beijing are um, Tiananmen Square. You're going to walk through that, have a chance to take pictures. Mao's tube is there. 
Um, you're going to go into the Forbidden City, which is right off of that. You saw some pictures of it. I don't think you recognized them before from Mr. Carraway's slides, but um, you'll go into the Forbidden City, which was the palace of the emperors. You're going to go all the way through. It's just like court after court after court. It's massive um, and gorgeous. Um, you're going to be uh, going out to the Summer Palace, which was a summer vacation retreat. Uh, for the royalty, for the emperor, you're going to take a dragon boat ride because you're going to be there during the summer, so that would be great. You get to ride on the dragon boat across the lake. Um, it's a beautiful setting. And um, while you are at the summer palace, is where you're scheduled to have your Tai Chi lesson. Don't know if you've ever done Tai Chi, but you get a real bona fide Tai Chi instructor. They're not kidding. They're not there for show. Uh, they'll probably even do a demo for you. It's really cool. Um, but then you'll try your hand at it, and then that um, afternoon, more than likely, you'll go to a local school. If we can, if the only caveat to that is um, you're going to be traveling in late June. We should be able to schedule for you to go to a school. Um, we're almost always able to do that, even in late June. Um, but I will just prep you for that. It is also dependent on school calendars and if we can get in, um, because they're getting out of school, just like we have. And then the last, or then that night, you're going to have a Peking duck dinner, okay? Traditional dinner, real Peking duck. And then the next day, you'll travel out to the wall. So you're going to spend several hours at the wall. You're probably going to have the chance to explore a lot of it on your own. If you are in really awesome shape and you want to try to run up all of those stairs and get as far as you can go, then by all means, go for it. Uh, there are guard towers and all kinds of things you can climb and. Um, get really pretty views of, of the wall and the whole like countryside, all mountains. Um, and then that afternoon, you're going to have a tea ceremony. Tea, as you may know, is very important in China. There's a lot of symbolism behind it um, and the way that things are done. But um, but then there are also lots of uses for the tea, and they believe in a lot of you know healing qualities of different kinds of tea. You're going to learn all about that. You're going to have a rickshaw ride in the Hutong, which is this old area of Beijing. This is what is being torn down now to put up skyscrapers. They're fast disappearing. I'm not exaggerating when I say that in your lifetime, they are going to disappear. So the, the fact that you're going to get to go and see that um, and, and be in them and see how traditional um, people in Beijing lived for so long is going to be really, really neat. You take a rickshaw, you know, where the, the guy is pedaling on the front, um, and take you through the hutong, and then actually eat in a family's house. They cook dinner for you. You get to eat. It's the real, real deal Chinese food. It's real as it gets. I, it's always my favorite meal, personally. Um, I think it's so good. But you're in their kitchen. You're seeing their pictures. You get to walk around their house. Um, it's really, really special. I, I love it. You'll have the option of going to the Legend of Kung Fu show if you want to see. Um, it's an amazing show of all different kinds of Kung Fu and how it's come through the ages, how it started, and, um, and everything. It's, it's amazing. That would be an option for you. Okay, so something you can choose to go to or not. Um, you will go to the Temple of Heaven Park before you leave Beijing, uh, which is just another, it's a beautiful temple. Um, and then you'll leave Beijing to fly to Xi'an. So you'll take that, you know, couple hour flight or so. And then when you arrive, the first thing you get to do is go on the city wall of Xi'an, which actually brings some of those pictures too. But this is the ancient city wall that used to surround the city. Now, of course, the city is way outside those limits. It spreads for <laughs> I don't even know how many miles. Um, but you're going to get to go on top of the wall. It's really wide on top. It's like probably almost, I guess about from that wall to that wall, just about, um, and you're going to get to bike ride on top of it. And then uh, the next day, you'll take your guided tour of Xi'an, and you're going to have some free time where you can kind of, um, you know, we, I'm sure your group will figure out who's going to go where and what you want to see, but you have some options to see the drum tower or the bell tower, or going to the Muslim quarter, or seeing food on the street. There are lots of crazy things you can buy from food vendors on the street. Um, talk with your tour director before you consume things because your tour director will give you advice on 
okay, that's pretty crazy, but it does look like it's safe. <laughs> you know, um, lots of stuff you can, you can buy. You can be very adventurous if you want to. Um, and then on day six, you're going to go see the Terracotta Warriors. Amazing. This is my one of my personal favorite parts about this trip. Um, you'll get to actually see the Terracotta Warriors. This is not in a museum where you see a few of them. This is in the actual place. It is a museum itself, but the actual pits where they have unearthed these warriors and put them back together, and you can see them standing in their lines, um, protecting the emperor in the afterlife. So it's amazing. There are three different pits that you walk to. They're covered. They're basically indoors. Um, they're amazing. And then you'll have the option again, this is something you choose to do, to go to a Tang Dynasty show and dinner if you want to learn more about the Tang Dynasty, lots of costumes and music and obviously dinner. And then day seven, you're gonna fly to Shanghai. It'll be interesting to see what your impressions are. Mr. Caraway kind of mentioned this, but what your impressions are of the different cities. They are three really unique cities. Um, so it'll, it'll be neat for you to see what we're talking about, uh, but you'll go to the World Financial Center, which actually has the highest observation deck in the world. It's not the, the tallest building in the world, but it has the highest, at least as of, I don't know, maybe six months ago when I checked, <laughs> um, the, the highest observation deck in the world. Something special about the floor. Um, let you either look that one up or see it when you get there. It's really amazing. And, um, and then you'll have some free time on what's called the Bund, which was, um, the side of the river that you'll see that looks very European because there were so many um, Europeans living there um, and uh, and there's lots of shopping and all kinds of stuff. Um, so that'd be really fun for you. And then you'll go to a Chinese acrobatic show. And that, I'm sure, is the folks who either were Chinese Olympians or maybe they didn't quite make the cut, but they're absolutely exceptional <laughs> gymnasts. So it's amazing. It's Fantastic shows, mind boggling. And then your very last day in Shanghai, you're going to do some sightseeing through the city. You'll have an actual tour of the city. You'll go to the Jade Buddha Temple, which has a gigantic, literally, Jade Buddha, um, and many other things that are just beautiful in that temple area. You'll go to the Yuan Garden, which is just gorgeous, right there in the middle of Shanghai, the garden that was built, again, for royalty. And then Nanjing Lu, which is an a really fantastic shopping street. Um, if you need last minute stuff before it's time to come home and you just can't resist this, then you're gonna be able to take care of it at the end. So it's a full trip. These are long days. You're gonna get up at probably, I don't know, somewhere between six and seven in the morning. You're gonna be getting on the bus around eight, 8.30. You're gonna go until probably 10 or 11 o'clock at night, uh, most nights. Very busy, but very fun. We want obviously once you get your money's worth, if you're flying 14 hours to get there, then we want to make sure it's worth it and you see as much as you can. Uh, the days are the days are, are really full but very fun. You will want to go to sleep at night, trust me. Um, all right, so that's the, the gist of the itinerary. Are there questions about this aspect of it? Okay. All right, so let's talk a little bit more then about kind of the logistics of this whole thing. So your group, um, if it is large enough to fill its own bus, which would be about 45 people on the bus, then it'll just be you guys. If you're not that large, however, you're not going to be penalized for being a smaller group. That's okay in terms of price. Um, you're not going to have to pay more. So one of the ways that we are able to keep prices or keep the tours affordable and keep prices down is by combining you with groups from around the country, which usually ends up being one of the best parts that students say um, of meeting other students from around the country, having a chance to do that. So we're going to combine you together. Um, we're going to put you, um, we're going to take other groups that want to go on either this specific itinerary or a similar one on the similar dates that you um, that you all are, are wanting to travel and then you'll travel together the entire time okay and mr caraway is actually going to have contact with the group leaders um, of other groups that you're being combined with so they can talk about things ahead of time that kind of thing and then you'll be with these folks the whole time 
So the requested departure date is June 22nd of 2016, okay, next summer. And then, uh, we, and what we need from you is four days of flexibility to do that combining that I'm talking about. We just need a little bit of flexibility. We're also looking for the very best flights we can get you. Um, so the earliest day you could depart would be June 18th, and your latest possible return would be June 26th. Okay. If you get your requested departure date of the 22nd, um, then you're you're going to be coming back just nine days after that. But the latest possible return, actually June, yeah, <coughs> that's not right. Latest possible return. No, that's incorrect. Okay, 22, 23, 26, 7, 8, 29, 30. Okay, so you should be returning on June 30th. Okay, if you get your requested departure date, but you could come back as late as July 1, 2, 3, 4, as late as July 4th. Okay, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Okay. All right. One of the aspects of this trip that will be available to you is an online learning platform called WeShare. Um, actually, Dr. Collins and Mr. Caraway are working together to figure out exactly what this uh, learning component is going to look like for you, um, but there um, there is going to be more than likely the option for you to do uh, basically it's your your own individualized project about what you're really interested in learning about on the trip, um, and it's something that you you complete through this platform, um, and it just really helps to bring the whole experience together for you, and it's also something that looks really good to show to colleges. Um, and, uh, and so more information is going to be coming on this. There may be some additional opportunities within that um, that these gentlemen are working on. So just kind of hold that thought on this, and they'll get back to you with some more information. So the all-inclusive coverage plan that I mentioned before is something that you have the option of purchasing. I will tell you, I would highly recommend it. My husband and I lead tours with students every summer. He's a teacher in Chesterfield County. Um, and we actually require it for our students. It is an option for you. Um, but the main things that it covers is uh, our tour cancellation and interruption for big things. Um, like, for example, if you get really sick right before you're supposed to go and you can't go, or if there's a death in the family or something of a you know, big nature like that, then this would, um, this would keep you from losing your money on the trip. Same thing if you're on tour and you need to come home early for something, like maybe you get sick or there's some kind of emergency back home or something and you need to fly home early, then that pays for that plane ticket. Especially when you're in a place as far away as China, um, I think it's nice knowing that you have the peace of mind that for $155, basically, you would be getting a return trip home in the case of an emergency instead of paying maybe that with a zero or, you know, on the end of it. So the second thing is illness and accidents. If you have to go to the doctor, be hospitalized, this will cover that kind of thing. Baggage and property being lost or stolen. And then if your flight's delayed and you don't get to your destination where you have your hotel reservation for the night and, um, and you need to stay overnight in some other you know, gateway, then this will pay for hotel and food and that kind of thing. So um, certainly check with your own insurance carriers and see what they, you know, what they provide but know that this is an option too for you. And there is more information on ES website. It's mentioned in that enrollment handbook I gave to each of you, um, but you, there's a website there you can go to for lots more details if you want them. Okay, so with regard to behavioral expectations, um, this is really Mr. Caraway's, um, you know, going to be his deal when you're on tour, but just know that EF has rules for you to follow that are very straightforward and common sense rules um, to keep you safe. And that there will also be rules, of course, from Mr. Caraway and things that you'll need to follow um, to make sure primarily that you are safe and that you really have an enjoyable experience on tour. I don't know if there's anything you want to add at this point about that. It'll come later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Just know, and I don't want to be the harbinger of doom, but I need to say it. That if someone does something, if you choose to do something and break a rule to an extent that 
uh, Mr. Carraway feels like it warrants you being sent home, he has the right to do that, and that would be at your parents' expense. Again, it doesn't seem like the group of uh, young individuals that would have any kinds of issues with that, but just want you to know that. Okay, so here's what you get, all right? So this is when you pay your price for the tour. This is what's included. It's almost everything, which is the beauty of this. So your full-time tour director, the educational itinerary, all of the sightseeing being led by local guides, okay, so your tour director a lot of times, local guides also, all the entrance fees to everything that's already taken care of, all the tickets, all that kind of stuff. We share the online learning platform I talked about, all of your round trip flights, so that's your international flights and your domestic flights in country, okay, all that's included, your hotels, they're very similar to hotels in the United States, uh, students are going to be rooming three or four to a room. Adults will be rooming two to a room. Um, but then they're going to be regular hotel rooms with a private bathroom in the room. What you used to. Uh, breakfast and dinner daily are included in the cost of the trip. And then transportation to all included activities. So when you're not on a plane, like I've talked about, you're going to be on a bus going from place to place. So all of that is included. What you are responsible for is just these few things. So the first thing is your spending money for those optional things. That was like the Kung Fu show, the Tang Dynasty show, if you want to do those kinds of things. Free to anything you do in your free time, of course, souvenirs, lunches each day is definitely something to budget for. Okay, so you'll have the, the chance to kind of pick where you want to go for lunch. Your tour director is going to make sure you're in great places and can say, okay, you've got 10 restaurants to choose from or whatever the situation might be, um, you will eat lunch. It's not that you don't get to eat lunch on the tour, you just pay for it out of pocket. And then beverages and snacks. And the reason we say beverages is water is served with the meal, but then if you wanna have a Coke or juice or something like that, you just pay for that out of pocket. What we recommend is about 45 to $65 a day, which is just a guide. I think as a family, you need to talk about that and figure out what really makes sense. That will, as you can imagine, largely depend on how much money you're planning on spending on souvenirs and that kind of thing. Although you really are in a great position because the dollar, of course, is very strong against the yuan. And in a lot of the markets and things like that that you go into, you'll be able to bargain and you can get really good deals on things. Um, so that, that would be fun. But that's just a guy, okay? The second thing is tips for your tour director, your bus drivers, and your local guides. So in China, just like you're in US or anywhere in Europe or anywhere in the world, when you have guides who are working for you like this and working really hard to make sure you're having an amazing experience, then it is customary to tip them. This is something that Mr. Caraway will take up before you leave so that you're not worried about handling it while you're on tour. Okay? And that boils down to about $10 per day per person. So for a nine day trip, nine times 10, $90 okay, for gratuities. Um, any airline checked baggage fees, if you check a bag um, and the airline charges for it, then you would need to pay for that. I recommend packing in a carry-on though, if you can, you can do it. Nine days, China in the summer, you could be wearing, you know, cool kinds of t-shirts and shorts and things like that, and you can do it. And then passport and visa fees, um, and I'm going to talk more about those in just a second. So those are the things that are out-of-pocket expenses, okay? Yes. You can, but you don't have to. The best way to get money while you're there is using an ATM card. They work. Um, visa, having a Visa MasterCard on it is usually the most, you know, those are the most effective ones. And then you just put it in the ATM and the money comes out that you want. So that's a great way to do it. You can exchange money also. The hotels in China, which is really rare these days anymore, they actually exchange money for you at the hotel, but they only exchange $20, $20 bills or no smaller than 20s. I usually take all 20s. Um, so that would be my recommendation. Um, and then if you have a credit card, I, you know, which students may or may not, but that could be a good kind of safety net just in case. Um, that kind of thing, just so you know, 
Uh, you'll be receiving information about how to prepare for the trip from EF. You're also going to be receiving information from Mr. Carraway. We're going to be giving him a lot so that he can convey that to you before you leave. Um, and you'll be having at least one meeting all together as a group before you head out. All right, so passports and visas. Everyone will need a passport. I know we're way far ahead right now. You really don't need to start thinking about this right now. But what I would say is I would, um, you're going to, everyone, all U.S. citizens also need a Chinese visa, okay? If you're not a U.S. citizen, you need to check on, on your paper, or what kind of paperwork and documentation you would need. But every U.S. citizen also has to have a Chinese visa. So what's going to happen is you're going to need to get that a few months prior to departure. You have to have your passport before you can get the visa. And again, Mr. Caraway will tell you all these things later, but since you're here, I'm going to give you a heads up. So I would start, um, I would start probably no later than six months prior to your tour working on your passport to give yourself a good three, four months to get it um, just in case. They, there are hangups sometimes and you just never know. So I would really be on the ball about that um, because you are going to have to sit, either take your passport in or send it in to get that visa put in it a few months before you leave. Okay. Um, one really important note, if you already have a passport, you have to make sure that it's valid for at least six months beyond the return date of the trip now. Um, that is, a, that is a, a, a rule that almost all countries have at this point. Um, I will tell you that if you show up to the airport here in the U.S. and your passport expires within six months, they will not let you on the airplane. But unfortunately, we have it happen way too often. Um, so you need to take a look at that passport expiration date. Okay? Make sure it doesn't expire six months, within six months after your return date. More information coming about that later. So nothing you need to do right now at the moment. All right. <clears throat> so paying for the trip. Um, so the total cost for students is 3385 and then for adults, it's $3,720. Um, the one caveat I do want to give to this is this is April's pricing, okay? The board, the school board, still needs to approve, like give the final approval for the trip, um, which is going to happen in the month of May. So this price could, it does have the chance to go up a little bit. Uh, when we cross over into May, it may not. Hopefully, it won't go anywhere. If it does, it shouldn't be much at all. Um, but but um, it does have the potential to be higher in the month of May. Um, and then you'll see the monthly payment. I'll talk about the payment options in a second. But the monthly payment of two fifty four is is for signing up here in the month of April. It's going to be slightly larger than that in May, even if the total price stays the same, just because there's one month less you know, for the payment to come out before you leave. So just know that that's going to be slightly different by the time um, you can sign up, um, pending that approval, which we're very hopeful is coming through. So far, so good up to this point. Um, so the payment options that you have are one, to pay in full when you enroll, two, to be on the automatic payment plan, which is an automatic deduction from your checking account, which you can choose the day for. And that can either be once a month or twice a month have that option now, um, which we did before. So the third option is the manual payment plan, which actually does have a $50 administrative fee, okay? So just know that there's a, a $50 fee for being on that plan. Um, and then what, what happens with that one is that your payments are um, divided into basically like three chunks, and the largest chunk is due at 110 days prior to departure. That information is in that enrollment handbook I gave to you too. Okay. So the way that you actually sign up for the trip is by paying the $95 deposit, which is part of the total cost. So it'll be $95 off that total cost once you um, pay that deposit. That reserves your space and locks in your price. So hopefully when the approval comes through in May, then you can pay your $95 and you've locked in that cost. It's not going to change after that, which is wonderful. So you don't have to worry about it. No matter what happens, if plane tickets go up or anything like that, it's not, your price is not going to go up. 
if for some reason prices go down, we actually do have a price adjustment that we can do. Uh, so we're very clear about that. Uh, so it's a $95 deposit. So and then those uh, payment options there. One of the ways that you can raise money for your tour, and there are many, many ways to do this. If you really want to raise some money, you can get creative and you can make it happen, students. Um, but one of the ways that we provide for you is this cool donations page. So what it is, is through your Traveler website that you get when you enroll, that you log into with your password and so forth, you've got this link down here that you can send out to family and friends and say, hey, would you like to donate to my tour? So maybe you could think, because we've got some holidays between now and the time you leave, we've got at least one birthday, that kind of thing. You could think about asking people uh, to donate to your trip. And it's very easy for them because you send them that link, and then they just click on the link, and they can donate straight to your tour. So um, it goes straight into your account. All right, so I talked about the $95 deposit in order to reserve your spot. The other information that you need is actually on the back of that enrollment booklet. So if you look on this one, on the back, there's a sticker up here that has your tour number on it. Should be the same one that's up there. Yes. <laughs> All right, so that's your tour number, okay? That's specifically for this tour. So when it comes time, um, for you to enroll on the trip, Mr. Caraway, I know is going to keep you abreast of the, of the latest on that. Um, that's the tour number that you need. All you have to do, there are different ways you can do this, but you can go to eftours.com slash that tour number and it'll take you straight to the site. You can actually go ahead and go there if you want to, just to poke around a little bit. You can see the itinerary, you can look at packing lists, you can see the pricing again, you can see more about insurance and all that kind of stuff. You can call in to EF. That number is also on this enrollment form. Again, using that tour number. And if you have any questions in the meantime also, any questions about payment plans or anything like that, feel free to give EF a call. Okay, that's what we're here for. Um, so we can answer your questions. Ignore that uh, application deadline because at this point in time, the approval is not 100% yet. So you can just ignore that for the moment. Okay, and Mr. Caraway will be giving you a, a deadline in terms of when enrollments need to happen once that approval is through. Okay. Let's go back to that slide and leave it on that one here for the end. What uh, that is, that's it in terms of what I have to tell you. What questions do you all have that I can answer? Yes. Uh, yep, yep. So there's a time for people to do There is, yes. So if they um, if people are choosing to go on the excursion, then they would go on that. And then if there are those who are not going on it, then you know, Mr. Fairway and whatever chaperones some people are on the trip would figure out what the rest of the group is going to do. That could be a great you know, time for free time, like with Shion, for example, being able to go back to the wall and walk around and things like that. Um, they'll they'll have different ideas. The tour director will give the group ideas for what they want to do, and or it just might need an extra hour of downtime. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. Did that? Does that answer your question? Here? Yeah, I was just wondering. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. So they won't be missing out on anything in the itinerary. To do Um, there is not a minimum. Um, what we're really aiming for is at least six, which I think based on the interest that was shown, I think that's going to happen. Um, but we would not, um, we wouldn't be automatically canceling it if there were fewer than that. It's a great question. I think there were like 36 yes. people maybe that um, responded, yeah, to, for your group. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted that Usually for those optional excursions, um, 
sometimes there's a minimum and sometimes there isn't. It just depends. Um, so I think what, you know, once you all start signing up, I think what would be a good thing to do through that traveler website that you can log into, you can actually sign up for those excursions. And I would say, if you know you already want to do them, go ahead and sign up. That way it gives Mr. Caraway an idea of how many want to do it. If it happens that there is a minimum number that you need to and you don't make the minimum, which by the way, you'd be combined with the other people in the group too, or on the bus, I mean. So if there are only three people from your group who want to do it, but we need a minimum of 20, and there are 17 people from the rest of the bus who want to, it would run. If it doesn't, you get your money back for it. Yeah. So you lose nothing by going ahead and saying, yes, I want to do it. You know, that's what I would do on your website. Are, are the chaperones provided by you or Mr. Carraway will be taking care of the chaperones? Mr. Carraway will be taking care of no sure if you volunteer so far. Right. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter told me that. I'm like, <laughs> We've had several people that have done uh, a number of groups in the episode. We've had some people trained in experience with the uh, um, So that's that's one, certainly one place. Parents can go too if they're not town. I want to clarify that for you. Thank you. Jenny, what's the quick question about um, so if somebody's on the automatic payment plan and there is fundraising, that is our plan that's you know part of Adam is to do uh, some fundraising. Okay. Yep. Try to do a fair amount. Um, how would that work with like that automatic payment plan? Is it just make automatic adjustments to the amount that's due? Yeah, when it's over $125 that's going on to any one person's account, it does adjust the monthly payment. Yeah, it just has to be a, at least $125 going in at once in order to adjust the payment. What would happen otherwise would be the regular monthly payments would continue as they had been, and then the last payment would show the full deduction of whatever had been added. So if you're only adding $25 a pop, on each person's account, the monthly payments are going to stay the same, but then the last one, you know, has the potential to be non existent. <laughs> yeah. So, on the same note, so if they raise more than you need, is that like the same for you to be comfortable with? That's really going to be up to Mr. Caraway and how you do it. Um, you know, some sometimes with fundraising, the group leaders will put the money onto the students' accounts like that, directly onto them. Or sometimes it might be that they fundraise for the, the tip money, for example, or for the spending money, which in that case, you wouldn't send that into EF. You would figure out how to hold on to that yeah, for each of the students. Now you're gonna walk out the door and you're gonna be in the car and you're gonna go, Oh, I forgot to ask that. Call customer service <laughs> if that happens. Um, or I'm sure you know, asking Mr. Caraway to uh, customer service is usually open Monday through Friday from about nine to five, I think. Sometimes they have extended hours, but that's generally here. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, and part of this normally this would be the process where or as as Jenny mentioned, where you would sign up and, and kind of start that. Um, Commitment process, of it. but um, given that our board has not formally approved the trip yet, we're we're kind of holding off until that approval takes place. Which uh, they uh, they were very supportive of the idea of exploring this uh, at our last meeting. Their next meeting is uh, May 11th, so that's when we'll really have you know that we have the uh, we go button push. So what we'd like to do is to just make sure that we've got information. I mean, I, I know I've got the uh, uh, the interest. Uh, I did the interest uh, survey from students, so I've got. Uh, student emails, and obviously they're not that well for you guys, uh, students set up pretty easily. But uh, it would be nice if, if, while you're here, if you wouldn't mind, uh, I've got some just real quickie forms just to uh, put your contact information just so we can have it all in one place, just one for a family, 
Um, and that way we can let you know of any developments that are coming up with this and start sending out more information. And then as soon as we get the approval, we'll be able to get you uh, going to actually on the development process for registering. And so I'm going to leave these over here with the uh, um, with uh, all of this stuff. I think everybody's got what they need over here and their pens and what have you over here as well. So I think that's the main thing. Yes. What is right. coming up in here somewhere along the process? Something happens. Yeah, that's a great question. It's not hard to <laughs> um, It's just a matter of how much is going to come back. So if it's um, if you purchase the coverage, okay, the all inclusive coverage, it's one fifty five, and um, and that price does not include that, by the way. If you purchase that and it's a reason that's covered under that then all you would lose would be um, your $95 deposit and the cost of that insurance, which is $155. Anything else you pay, you would get back, okay? In the event that it's not something that's covered under that insurance, then on page 12 in this booklet, it talks about the cancellation policy. So then it's just a matter of how far in advance of the tour are you pulling off, and that's what determines how much money you would get back. But um, even up to 110 days prior to departure, which is three and a half months before you leave, you would lose the $95 deposit, your cost of insurance if you pay for that, and then a $500 cancellation fee. So still, even three and a half months prior to departure, you would just lose that, that money. When it gets closer, then it starts, you know, becomes 50% of the program fee, or if it's within, uh, if it's 29 days or less, prior to departure, then there's no refund, okay? And that's, again, assuming it's something that's not covered under the insurance. The other thing to know is, to the right where it says cancellation with replacement, your best bet, if you have to pull off for a reason not covered under the insurance, try to find someone else who can go in that spot, and then you avoid, uh, basically avoid the cancellation fee. So your $95 deposit is non-refundable, okay? And the 155 for the insurance is not uncomfortable. But you can't really exchange planes and get from one person to another. Um, it's going to depend how far out it is. If it's, okay. if it's 109 days or less prior to departure, then we can't accept a replacement. Okay. But still, up to three and a half months before you leave, okay. we, can, we can still do it. And there's just a $100 substitution fee. Oh, okay. Yeah. I seem to think yeah. literally the airlines would let you yeah. buy a ticket for John Smith and then. They won't. They won't. Yeah. yeah. And the way EF books flights with group travel like this, we're booking a certain number of spaces. So okay. we have your space reserved, but okay. your name doesn't go on that ticket and make it yours, you know, until okay. around 110, just under 110 days prior to departure. So that's why we stop accepting it then. So it doesn't okay. mean you don't already have a plane ticket, but you do. Okay. So that makes your sense. name on it. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Sure. What else? Anything? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming. Have a safe drive home. I uh, hope you feel like you've gotten 